All right, today's video is going to be about doing a carrier bearing replacement on a 88 F350 dually tool drive. Now, you're not going to need many tools for this, but on these trucks, they have the little straps, the U-bolt strap, whatever, and they take a Torx head T45 bit. And they're pretty stiff to get in and out, so just a heads up, you're going to need some oomph behind you to get them in and out. And you're going to have two per strap, and you can see the bolts and stuff over here. So you need to go ahead and remove those and get them out of the way, and that way the, the front drive shaft is completely free. Now, on this part is a little bit different than what you're going to see because the previous owners made this up. Uh, I guess this would be the original size bolts, which is something, the ones that came off of this was something like a 19 millimeter, uh, whatever that converts over to, but back here is the original carrier bearing support brace. They put bolts in it and then used something like eighth inch or so angle iron and screwed it forward two inches or so, three, yeah, it's about three inches and put the carrier bearing up here for whatever reason. So I don't know if this is what you'd say right. I mean, it works. Because the only job that this does is just simply hold the drive shaft from doing that and falling out. But uh, if it's 19 millimeter bolts, that's what you're gonna need. You probably need a wrench to get on the top unless you got two ratchets and some sockets. So just a heads up. And if it's never been done before, it will probably be a uh, rivet like that so have fun with a cutoff wheel normally your metal u strap would stay with this but mine wasn't even right like it didn't even fit i'll post a picture now and uh once i found out it wasn't right i just said i'll go ahead and replace it because these are notorious for being a pain. So at this point, after you got it separated, you got it up on your workbench, tailgate, whatever, slide this little cover off, it just slides out. So now is the point where we get to go all caveman on it with a hammer, chisel, and basically what we're gonna do is start hitting this this way all the way around equally until finally it'll slip down. And if worst case scenario comes to it, I'll just bust out the cutoff wheel and be done with it. So just a heads up, gently tap this fella out first. And then this will try to, as you go around it, it'll try to start moving. But if you can't get enough leverage this way and it's wanting to hit more into it, take and flip your chisel this way. So you're actually getting a bite down, making it force off of it. So at this point, this is what it looks like. And you'll need to ride that bearing all the way back up to right here where this clean is. This helps to keep dirt and dust out of it. And as does this fella, it's kind of got a cap that goes over it. But that's all it is to removing the carrier bearing. And to put it back on is about the same way. Just equally tap around it so it's not getting caught. So after some more measurement, I found out that the original carrier bearing I bought was too small. It was the 1.37 inch setup. And I, in fact, needed the 1.52 or something like that inch setup. Now the associated boxes are here this is an anchor set up it's a chinese part and the number is 6038 I paid about 21 dollars for it it came with this new flange set up this one came from carquest and this one's made in mexico this one's made in china and this one did not come with the little flange deal you had to reuse your own another interesting note is the uh, the rubber on this is different between the two. I don't know why they would be the different, but 
that's just another thing I noticed besides the overall size and shape and stuff. And one thing that really bugged me whenever I first bought this one was it has no guard for the bearing. So dirt, water, whatever gets in the bearing, it's toast. This one, if you really look down in there, it's got a plastic slinger guard set up to keep the dirt and the water and whatnot out of the bearing. So it should last longer than, say, this one. So that's just a little side note I wanted to show you guys as I swap this out. That way that somebody else don't go through the headache of what I'm going through. And also a side note for that is when you're looking on your drive shaft, uh, pretty much don't just measure right here because it has to step up to this bearing pad here. Basically, if the inside of your bearing doesn't clear this, it won't clear that. That was just a thing I learned today. And then uh, basically from there, you just knock this old flange off, put the new on, and then press your bearing in and you're good to go. So at this point, the carrier bearing is done. Uh, I picked the new one on. It basically fell off and fell on with just a little bit of pecking. And uh, the, it's got a much better angle of the drive line because it's not just letting it hang down. So we got that all put back together. I greased this so it had plenty of lubrication for the sliding in and out action. Tightened everything up. And I didn't get to use the, the flange because I was afraid of it contacting the rubber and tearing it. So I just took it off because it has a a guard inside of the bearing to keep dirt and moisture out. So there's that. Uh, I will be upgrading this probably in a few months to just redo it with all the Spicer U-joints, carrier bearing, everything, and be done with that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I tightened my Torx head strap bolts up here for the U-joints, put new grease in them, so forth. Uh, I tightened them pretty tight and like again, they're a T45 Torx head bit, so now I'm going to take it for a test drive, see how everything fits.